Now, I know it's hard to picture anything with this wallpaper still up, but at least you can get the idea with the hideous plates gone and those tacky country goo guys. Good morning. Uh, Mom, this is... Winky, Winky, this is my mother, Maxine Gray. Owner of the hideous plates and tacky country goo Oh, well, now Amy says you work, so I know you haven't had much time to update. No, actually, I'm a fan of hideous and tacky motif. Mm -hmm. Amy, when I went to bed last night, the kitchen wasn't naked. Oh, now, Amy needs a blank slate. Blank slate. Well, I need a toaster. It's in there. Now, I better get shopping for wallpaper. I'm thinking of something in this family. The red family? Actually, this is watermelon. Could we maybe go for something a little less watermelon? Now, now, let's keep an open mind. I'll bring by some more samples. Well, I better get myself busy. This poor house has waited long enough. Bye bye now. Toodaloo. Okay, Mom, before you crank it up, remember you promised to be supportive. Winky? It's not a real name. Oh, so she changed it to Winky. Well, that, that, that makes me feel better. Lauren, breakfast in five minutes. From Winky's information, this wallpaper was top of the line in its day. So was the Titanic. Hey, Donna. Judge Gray, um, do you remember when I asked you if it would be okay if I followed your mother around for a couple of days to do research for my paper for my law and the family course, and you said it would be fine? Oh, really? Amy said that? I, I may have said that I was reasonably sure it would be okay, Donna being almost a member of the family and all. Well, I, I just realized that, that my paper's due at the end of this week, so uh, I need to take you up on your offer. Soon. Today. Today? That would be soon. Well, I, I know it's short notice and, and a big imposition, but it's 60% of my grade. The last time you asked me for a favor, you had a baby in my dining room. Well, so I suppose this is uh, comparatively small potatoes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I promise you won't even know I'm there. I'll go get some uh, lattes and biscotti, and I'll uh, meet you down at your office. Okay. Did I say thank you? Yes, you did. You know how much I hate being followed around at work with all the critiquing and opining. I don't even let Sean Potter do that. Well, Mom, it's just a few days. So how bad could it be? I would rather be trapped in a coal mine with three Republicans and a lapdog. That's the spirit. And Winky. <laughs> We have three custody cases back to back. I figured to get the snipping parents out of the way. How's Zola? I don't think it's a good idea to discuss any fraternization with the opposite gender. You fraternizing? This is me ignoring you. All right, let me get this straight. As long as we work together, we can't have any relationship, not even a friendship. But here you are cavorting with your lawyer. You are jumping to huge and erroneous conclusions. Which I would tell you if we were discussing our personal lives, which we are not. Would you like coffee? If she is just your lawyer, then she doesn't fall into the personal life category. Good. Amy? Helene? It's, is there an appointment I forgot about? No, you had a mediation hearing. I know. One o'clock, I'm there. It isn't happening. Michael canceled. Well, I, I canceled last two times. I guess it's his turn. Uh, uh. I don't mean the hearing. I mean the mediation. Michael withdrew. I got a call from his attorney. We left it with me thinking over his proposal. Why would he withdraw now? I thought you might know. Any recent flare-ups? No. Anything you want to tell me? It's my court services officer. That's him? Well, the improper conduct allegations suddenly make sense. You didn't lie to the Judiciary Committee? No, I did not. 
Can we just focus on the current crisis, Elaine? That's all I know. His attorney left me a message and said we'd be hearing from him. Well, let me know when we do. You didn't lie to the Judiciary Committee. Goodbye, Helene. Come on in. It was that woman in 4B, wasn't it? She's always griping about my kids making noise. Uh, we have a report of a school-aged child not in school. My children are homeschooled. Doesn't she have to have proof? Well, anyone could say their kid is homeschooled. Kevin, what was that? Nothing. Stupid baby. You better not be teasing Tracy again. Mrs. Weston, how many children do you have? Kevin, he's eight. Tracy should just turn five. Michael's ten. He's at the quick pick getting some milk. And this is Denise. Should Michael be walking to the quick pick by himself? I have impulse control issues. Well, get over them. The quick pick is just two blocks away, and he knows how to cross the street. Look, I haven't done anything wrong, and I really don't have time to chat. Ms. Weston, I can see that you have your hands full. But, um, if you'd like to apply, DCF has services that might help. Do I look that naive? You're here to find a way to take my kids away from me. You people don't allow for normal life circumstances. Such as? I get depression, okay? I get over it in a few weeks, and so maybe my kids will be loud for a while. Maybe my house will be a mess. So what? Are you seeing a psychiatrist? Yeah, five times a week in my spare time, and he works for free. I don't mean lie on a couch and tell him your problems. I mean a physician who could prescribe an antidepressant. Those things cause cancer for all anybody knows. I was on the Fen Fen diet, and I still have to have my heart checked from that. If you don't mind. Ms. Weston, um, these are my numbers. I, I wish when you get a minute you'd give me a call. I'm certain that we can figure out a way to help you. Okay, fine. Whatever. In the matter of Sonia Haskell, age six, uh, the petitioner is Sonia's mother, Penny Haskell, who is seeking to modify the custody agreement. We're seeking full custody, Your Honor. Right, and, and since your client currently has joint custody, full custody would qualify as a modification. The respondent, Sonia's father, Kurt Haskell, is also asking for full custody, and uh, the petitioner alleges sexual abuse on the part of the respondent and uh, mr radford you're gonna have to explain to me what your client is alleging because i've read your brief twice now and i have no idea what it means your honor we intend to prove that sonia haskell is a victim of malicious alienation syndrome which as far as i can tell means you think her mother talks badly about her father could we just say that with respect your honor this is an actual syndrome and we have an expert witness who will explain it to you better than I can. Uh, Your Honor, their so-called expert. Yes, I, I know, Miss Manson. Your expert can beat up their expert. Uh, well, noting the Dobert reliability test, I will hear the experts. And after testimony, I will rule on the scientific validity of this alleged syndrome. And when will we hear that testimony, Mr. Van Exel? Tomorrow, 11.15. Tomorrow, 11.15. I'll see everyone then. Next case. Hey, Michael. Hey, man. You want to come in? Uh, Lucia's in the car. Uh, is Lauren ready? Uh, I thought we could talk. I don't have time. My mother's expecting us in 10 minutes. Could you please call Lauren? Lauren, your father's here. Why did you cancel mediation? I don't want to talk about that. I said I'd consider your proposal. If there was a time limit on it, you should have told me. I'll bring her back at the end of the day Thursday, as we agreed. Are, are you, you going to answer my question? Come on, sweetie. Get in the car. Lucia's waiting for us. Bye, Noodle. Have fun. Hey, Michael. If this is your way of trying to bully me into accepting your proposal... Amy, on the advice of my attorneys, I'm not to speak to you about this. Good night.
Riley, you busy in here? Very. I am in the middle of a fascinating article about Stucky the mummified coon dog. Huh. Well, I don't want to pull you away from that. He's on display in Atlanta, Georgia, and as far as modern science is able to discern, he is the only mummified coon dog on the planet. There's a woman out here looking for you. I'm for it. Not that kind of woman. How do you know? Because she's a little too old for you, and her hair wouldn't move in a wind tunnel. What are you doing here? Uh, doesn't your mother even get a hug? Somebody die? Of course not, and don't be morbid. Is there some place nicer where we can talk? Yeah, there's a, a day spa on the second floor and a five-star restaurant on the roof. So much for my hope that you'd changed. I, I'm on duty now. I can't just walk out. When are you off duty? This is my hotel. I'm not leaving town until you talk to me, so you might as well get it over with. Figure out your schedule and call me. Then that weekend, she came home from his house and she wasn't herself. How so? She was quiet and kind of pouty and she wouldn't come out of her room. And then finally, she told me what happened. What did she tell you? She said, Daddy made me touch his you-know. That is a flat-out lie. Mr. Hassler, you're gonna have to wait your turn. Now, am I supposed to just sit here while she tells hideous lies about me? Yes, you are. And if she is telling hideous lies, then she will be in big trouble later on. Mrs. Haskell, were those your daughter's exact words? Did she say you know or are you saying you know that's exactly what she said no further questions your honor mrs haskell isn't it true that you called your ex-husband a lying jackass bottom feeder in front of your daughter objection overruled please answer yes i did that once and didn't you also tell your daughter Daddy left because he doesn't love us anymore? I, I may have said that in a, a fit of anger, but I apologized later. How often do you make derogatory remarks about your ex-husband in front of your daughter? I don't know. An estimate. I don't know. <sighs> no further questions, Your Honor. I don't care what that noisy bag of wind told you. My kids are fine. We had a report that two of your children were playing in the street at dusk alone, and your wife was nowhere in sight. Well, my kids don't play in the street at night. They know better. Your wife is suffering from postpartum depression. Are you a shrink, too? No, I am not, and you're correct. Your wife should be diagnosed by a physician as soon as possible. I don't want to take any of that crap. What crap would that be? Prozac or any of that other crap. They hand it out like it's candy, then five years down the road, they go, oh, whoops, we just found out it causes brain tumors. Well, that's what your wife said. Almost exactly. Yes, I noticed that. Mr. Weston, your wife says she has a history of postpartum depression. We've been through this with every kid. She gets weepy. She's not getting enough sleep. She can't get into her genes. Three months, six months, whatever, she's over it. What you need to understand is... What I don't need is the government in my house or following me around at work telling me how to run my own family. Mr. Weston, I'm concerned about your children's safety. One nutcase drowns her kids in a bathtub, so now what, you're going to take everybody's kids so you can give them to some creepy foster family who's only in it for the money? Or lose them entirely? Well, I read the papers, and I know about you people. Thank you for your cooperation. Nice butt, though. Did I say that out loud? Coming.
Judge Amy Gray? Yeah. You are served. I thought I heard the front door. I tried to like him when you married him. I tried to like him when you divorced him, now that he is trying to take your child away. I'm officially done. I'm on the kitchen. I'll make you some cocoa. Malicious alienation syndrome is a disorder which most commonly arises in the context of a child custody dispute. Its primary manifestation is the child's campaign of denigration against the parent, in this case, the father. And why, in your expert opinion, would a child launch this campaign? The disorder results from the combination of the brainwashing parents' indoctrination and the child's own vilification of the disenfranchised parent. Uh, okay, uh, if I could interject a little English here. You, you're saying that you believe Sonia Haskell is making up these lies against her father to get in good with her mother. Well, that is a very simplistic way of putting it, but... Yes. That is the basic concept of the syndrome. Uh, Your Honor, this um, so-called syndrome was invented by Dr. Larrabee and has never been subjected to empirical study, testing, or research. Nor has it ever been published in any peer-reviewed medical journal. None of that invalidates my clinical experience. Dr. Larrabee, have you actually interviewed the child in question? That has not been possible. As is typically the case, the alienating parent is not willing to subject the child's story to any outside scrutiny. Okay. Uh, well, as I, as I mentioned before, I uh, will be hearing motions to strike the expert testimony after I've heard all the expert testimony, and Mr. Van Exel will tell us when the next expert will testify. 4.30 this afternoon. I'll see you all then. Thank you. I've got five minutes before I have to make rounds on ICU. Well, that sounds so impressive. Say hello to your sister. Hi, Kyle. Susie. If this is an intervention, I, I hate to disappoint you, but I don't have any vices left. I told Susie that I was coming to see you, and she decided to join us. <laughs> you look good. Thank you. I wish I could say the same for your hospital. I guess you had to go where they would take you. Is there some place... some place nicer. You're right, we do have an agenda. Susie and I are throwing a big party for your father's 65th birthday, which you may remember is coming up. Black tie, dinner, dancing, 200 guests. We booked the grand ballroom at the Ritz-Carlton. I hope you all have a great time. Will you at least hear me out? If you will explain to me why you are throwing this dinner. A lot has happened since you've been gone. Your father and I have... Well, I wouldn't say reconcile, but I guess you'd call it dating. Are you a glutton for punishment? People change, Kyle. He doesn't change. It's just for one night. It's not going to kill you. And it would mean a great deal to your father. He doesn't need me. He has Susie to play the perfect daughter, and the lovely and talented Walt can drive her there in his Porsche. I thought you liked Walt. Oh, I pretended to like Walt, so I wouldn't offend all the other people who pretended to like Walt. If this is recovery... I liked you better as a drug addict. All right, you two. Susie, you know damn well that war can be a horse's ass. And Kyle, it is not your sister's fault that she's made something of her life and you didn't. I'm in the process. Thank you. So you believe that you can change, but Dad can't? 
I made a reservation for the three of us for tomorrow night at the High Blind. I understand that your shift ends at seven o'clock, so I made the reservation for eight. It will give you time to shower and dress, and I'll send a car for you. Are you also going to send a guy with a gun? Kyle, we came all the way here. The least that you could do is have dinner with us. I have my own car. Thank you. Hello, Kevin. May we come in? My mom says not to let strangers in the house. That's very good advice. But we're not strangers. We we were here the other day. Remember? Oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, where's your mother? She's taking naps. She has to take naps. I see. Would it be possible for you to wake her and let her know that we're here? We're not supposed to wake her up. Where's everybody else? Michael's at the laundromat. The others are in the kitchen. We're cooking lunch. Why don't you show me? Kevin, help! Mom! Mom, there's a fire! Donna! Donna, get the phone. Call 511-0501 and, uh, and give me the phone. What's going on in here? Your unsupervised children were cooking. And you're lucky they didn't burn the place down with everybody in it. Sean, yes, uh, I need you to authorize an emergency removal for four children and get me on somebody's docket for an OTC. Yeah, and, and could you, uh, could you check the list and see who can handle four children on short notice? You're not going to you. take my children. You're not going to take my children. Yes, Mrs. Weston, we are. Donna. Take the children to the car, find out where the laundromat is. I will find a neighbor to uh, stay with Mrs. Weston for a while. You can't take my children. Yes, I can. Is mommy coming with us? I would prefer not to have to call the police and cause a big, horrible spectacle and, and cause your children more trauma, but I will do that if I have to. Studies have shown that children rarely lie about sexual abuse, especially when accusing a parent. A child's natural instinct is to protect a parent. Have you had a chance to interview Sonia Haskell? Yes, I spent almost two hours with her. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Radford, the fact that your expert has not interviewed Sonia Haskell does not invalidate Dr. Levin's observations. You may answer. Her description of what happened was quite graphic and that's the most typical symptom of sexual abuse in my extensive experience let's have an informal chat about all the extensive experience in this room dr levin do you by any chance belong to an organization which represents children who are victims of sexual abuse in fact i'm on the board of directors of the children's aid alliance which is a child advocacy group dedicated to supporting victims of sexual abuse and by any chance, have you written a book on the subject? Two, actually. And, uh, Mr. Radford, how many books did you say your expert had written? Uh, four, Your Honor. Well, five, if you include the one she's currently editing. Oh, what the heck? Let's do. And just out of curiosity, have any of these books been published by someone other than a vanity press? I must be psychic. Counsel, do you have any experts who are free from self-serving motivations? Okay, well, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to interview Sonia Haskell. Is that really necessary? Apparently it is. Cool, the Christmas lights. Can I help? Put on a warmer jacket. Okay. Hey. Bye, Daddy. All right. Bye, kitten. Hey, Michael. Want to tell me what the hell you're doing? I've already told you I, I, I can't. I know, I know. You're attorney. Since, since when are we not speaking face to face? 
And, and since you're trying to take my daughter away from me, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Uh, my attorney. A face-to-face -face explanation, Michael? Have you turned into a wimp? You do everything behind my back? Behind your back. I I'm sorry, did I miss the part where you told me that you had a lunatic stalking you? I was going to tell you. When? What else haven't you told me? And given the events of the last couple of weeks, Amy, what do you need me to explain? on our schedule for today. Any more child snatching? Donna, what, what exactly is the, is the premise of this paper? Uh, it's about the, the danger of, uh, that is to say, the uh, predicament of, or, or rather, the challenge of, uh, I haven't entirely narrowed it down. Maxine, you placed four children with the Overbees yesterday? Temporarily. I'm, I'm going into court this afternoon for the OTC. One of them's missing. Missing? Kevin, the eight-year-old. Apparently, he stole the Overby's minivan and he took off in it. Have you notified the authorities? I just got the call. Uh, Maxine? Oh. Can I help? I, I, we need to find him fast. I mean, he's so little. Start on the second page. Go. Answer. Answer the phone. Sonia, why don't you want to see your daddy anymore? My mommy told you about it. Yeah, she did. But I need to hear about it from you. I don't want to tell it again. Well, I can understand that. But I have to find out the truth. Because I have to decide what's best for you. I want to see my daddy again. Just not now. Why is that? Sonia, this, this is pretty serious. This may mean that you never see your daddy again. I'll see him again. Later. Well, I'm going to decide about that. I'll see him after I go to Disney World. Who's taking you to Disney World? Your mom? No, those people. What people? The ones that take you to Disney World when your daddy made you do something bad. My friend Jennifer went and they even bought her a Toy Story snow globe. Uh, Sonia, did you make up this story about your daddy so those people would take you to Disney World? You won't tell, will you? Brown hair, blue eyes, last seen wearing blue jeans and a red sweatshirt with quick something. It's a skater brand. I Maxine, I found him. Where? Hartford General. He flipped the minivan on the interstate. Oh. Oh. Go, 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 go! Okay, I'm ready to rule. Your Honor. Your Honor. Counsel, be seated. I will not be hearing motions to strike the so-called expert testimony. This entire case was based on a lie. Because Sonia's friend Jennifer was taken to Disney World by an advocacy group for sexually abused children, and Sonia borrowed the facts from Jennifer to try to secure a trip of her own. Now, Sonia needs a little time out and a lecture about lying, especially given the ramifications of this particular lie. And meanwhile, I am dismissing the motion and denying relief as to both parties. But while I still have you all here, I would like to announce a new syndrome. It's called the angry judge syndrome. Now, I invented it myself, and even though I haven't written a book on it, that doesn't make it any less valid. 
The primary symptom of this syndrome is an irrepressible urge to unload on all deserving parties. Mrs. Haskell, you have created an atmosphere in your home which rewards your daughter for making up a vicious lie that could have ruined her father's life. Mr. Haskell, despite the fact that you were treated unjustly, you used the lie to try to get your daughter away from her mother without ever bothering to find out what really happened. And then you two haul out your dueling, self-proclaimed experts that clearly don't give a damn about anything except putting this case on their resumes. And in the process, all of you have managed to trivialize a very serious issue and waste this court's time. Everybody in this room needs to grow the hell up. We're adjourned. Bumps, bruises, minor lacerations from the glass. We're going to do a full set of x-rays to be sure, but I'm not concerned. If you're planning to scold them, at least thank them for wearing a seatbelt. I thought I was stepping on the brake. It was the gas pedal. I couldn't see. I'm sure you couldn't, because cars are not built to be driven by eight-year-olds. Are you going to put me in jail? No, but I am going to give you what is technically known as a good talking to. Don't understand. My mom needs me to be there. I have to tell her not to hurt herself. Well, you're right. I don't understand. Does your mom say that she's going to hurt herself? She always says, I ought to take all the pills, or I ought to find out he's gone. And then I remind her stuff like the baby needs her. We all need her. Even daddy. And then she remembers. And she doesn't hurt herself. But if I'm not there, he took us all away from her. Who knows what she'll do now? Donna, will you explain to Kevin that everything at his mother's house is fine? And I'll be right back. Listen. My mother used to say she was going to hurt herself, too. Guess how old she is now. He's all right. He's going to be here for a while. I'm going to see him. Mr. Weston. Your son is in the system now, which means that the evil government worker, that would be me, is going to have a lot to say about where he goes next. So it would behoove you to impress me. What would impress me right now is for you to decide that since Kevin has doctors and nurses and me to stay with him, it would be wise for you to go home and get your wife to a mental health professional immediately. Of course, the choice is up to you. I'll be back. Yes, I'm sure you will. <sighs> this is how you dress to go home and pass out? The mother and sister have blown into town. Like an ill wind? <laughs> Why, don't I look delighted? I've never been good at this. Here. I have society parents, too. They're furious at me for wasting my expensive education on the ghetto. Is this what they teach you at Cotillion? <laughs> no. I have three brothers who are also not so good at this. There. Great. Now I look like a well-dressed zombie. No, you look good. Dr. Redeker to OR. Dr. Redeker to OR. Good luck. Thank you. My unsolicited advice? Yeah. Tell them to go to hell. Better than any drug you ever took.
Donna, is something wrong? Not really. Except you flunked my paper. Well, you haven't even written it yet. I know. I can't write it. It, it. it needs to be balanced. You know, the pros and cons of the DCF. Some kids are saved, some kids are lost in the system, blah, blah, blah. You know, that, that caseworker in Florida, blah, blah, blah. All that trendy topical stuff my professor would lap right up. Oh, I see. So you haven't gained anything from this experience that would help you to, okay, to right. trash DCF. It did everything just right. I'm sorry. I can be annoying like that. Oh. Well, should have followed a bad social worker. Donna, could you afford to spend uh, one more day on research? Mm, I guess so. Why? I know where you can find a wealth of material. Oh, Kimberly, would you come over here for a moment? There's someone I'd like you to meet. I, I'm like right in the middle of something. You may need only half a day. Look, I will come back for a weekend soon, but I'm not coming to this party. Kyle. This is just a petty attempt to punish your father. Thank you. Susie, why are you in this? Did, did she ask you to come? Could we finish discussing your father before you pick another fight with your sister? I am not picking a fight. Just asking a question. I'm here because I miss you, okay? We all miss you. And it would mean so much to Dad. Oh, please. Once I stopped achieving, I stopped existing to him. God knows he doesn't want to explain where I've been. If you're there, no one will ask where you've been. And who gets the mineral water? So the ladies get the martinis. <laughs> oh, God, for heaven's sakes. At least have a glass of wine. Would you like to see the wine list? I can't have a glass of wine. I'm an alcoholic, but I'm very happy with the mineral water. Does everyone on this planet need to know that you think you're an alcoholic? I think? I know how this program works. You go in for one thing, and they convince you that you're addicted to everything. Okay. What if we don't go down this road? Mom, if you want to live in denial, it's fine. You see, that's what they do. If you don't agree with them, you're in denial. Okay, A, that is a load of crap. And B, do you realize that you're upset because now the waiter knows that you're the mother of an alcoholic? I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Is that something else those people have been putting into your head? For God's sake, Mom. If you didn't care what anyone thought, we wouldn't even be sitting here. The only reason you want me to come to this damn party is because it'll be embarrassing for you to explain my absence. Will you please lower your voice. Why? You don't care what anyone thinks. Kyle, you're causing a scene. No, I'm not. Can I have everyone's attention, please? This may look like a gin and tonic from across the room, but it's actually a mineral water with a slice of lime because I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, which my mother doesn't want you to know, but oops. I guess I just let it slip. Enjoy your evening. Now I'm causing a scene. Kyle. Take care of yourself. somewhere that it takes a maritime cherry 14 years to digest it. I would love to know how that study is conducted. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, it's hey. Amy! Well, um, Maxine invited me for ice cream, and I came, even though I should be picking up Ariadne at the babysitter. And I invited Kyle, who came, even though he should be sleeping. And I invited Lauren. Who should be doing her homework. And what should you be doing? Evidently, I should be on my way to the store to get more ice cream. Ah, there's plenty. Pull up a spoon. You know, I figured something out. When I was growing up, my mother was always ragging on your family. What did she say? Well, that Maxine was 
overbearing and opinionated, that Edward was obstinate, and that Peter was a long-haired know-it-all, and so on. And so on like what? Vincent was uh, weird and probably gay, and that you were stuck up and bossy. <laughs> Is this going to turn around at some point? Well, what I realized that she saw that she couldn't stand was a family that worked because she didn't have one. Does she still not like us? <laughs> no, no, she's too busy not liking me. I really think that's it. I think, I think she was jealous of you. Well, she should be. We're fabulous. Who <laughs> <laughs> uh, can do? <gasps> oh. Cool. How do you do that? It's an art. Well, I'll get that. Wouldn't want to interrupt the art. Oh. Hey, Lane. Come on in. Is Lauren here? Everybody in the world seems to be here. Uh, I can't stay. I'm just going to leave this for you. What is it? It's a file I received from Michael's attorney. You look upset. How bad can it be? Amy. It's everything. It's stuff he couldn't possibly know, except evidently he's had a detective trailing you for over a year. You can't be serious. I wish I weren't. It's all in there. I can tell you every guy you've slept with in the last year, including Judge Crumble. And apparently you went skinny dipping with Stu Collins. A lot of stuff you never mentioned to me. Because it's nobody's damn business. Well, it is now. Fine. Fine. I wasn't a nun. It's the 21st century. He can't take my kid away from me for that. There's more. Oh, my God. That's your CSO, isn't it? The one with whom you didn't have an affair? I, I didn't. Even if that's true, nobody's going to believe you. Spend the evening with this. Call me in the morning. On TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, Amy faces a tough decision on declaring a missing child legally dead. Don't miss the drama of Judge.